Hey everyone, my name is Aaron from Pelican Racing Parts. Just want to give you a quick tutorial today on the CK3 drop and roll kit. We get a lot of questions about it, so I just want to give a little explanation. Um, this kit is made by Mike Zerkowski. Uh, Mike's in New York. He's the original designer of this kit. First guy to ever come up with it. Um, so great on Mike. Mike did a beautiful job making some nice templates and the kit goes in real smooth. So we just want to show you the breakdown of what it is, kind of what you need to do it. Um, the kit comes with two stainless templates. You'll put these in after and they'll kind of just cover up the old holes and support the bulkhead again. Comes with three nice little templates. You just gotta cut these out here with a little knife and uh, these will lay over the factory rivet holes right here. And they'll tell you where the original was and where your new holes are for basically moving the shafts and the chassis. So you get three of these. Beautiful setup here. And these will show you where the existing chain case bolts were. And then you need to re-drill three new holes here just to kind of move the chain case back. So it's what these are. And these were the old holes. So everything's labeled out real nice and smooth for you. You just cut these out with a little knife. So the more accurate you are cutting out, obviously the more accurate you are on the hole. So it comes with three of these. You get mag side, PTO side, and another one for the PTO side for the chain case bolts. And of course, comes with a sticker. So here's the difference between the two chain cases, stock CK3 chassis, 98 to 03 CK3 chassis, and that's what this fits. The chain case is a little shorter, um, so then you're allowed to put a ZX chassis, 99 to 03 ZX, or 04 to 07 Rev chassis. The only one that doesn't fit is the 2003 Rev, um, be careful with that. So everything else, ZX and Rev, same chain case. It's a little longer, center to center here. So what we're doing is we're kind of moving the chain case down this way a bit and tilting it back. So it allows you to get a bigger stud pattern in there, a bigger chisel, sorry, bigger lug pattern for snow tracks. And it helps the angle as it comes off the drivers down to the approach angle is much more smooth with this kind of setup. So we've got one setup here, just wanna show you. This is the way I start right here. I would just cut out the existing chain case stud holes and I lay the pattern right on the original. So this gives a real indication and you see how the original hole right here we cut out. And this is gonna be the piece we're gonna trim out on this side here. Um, I like starting this way because it's nice and easy um, and you get a good accurate cut on your first hole here. And then after that, I would move on to where the new stud placement here on this side is. And then you can also verify with this one right here. It's the same thing with the stud pattern and your hole. Um, so either or works out, right? So we're just gonna cut this out and then we'll do another video on the PTO side. Just a little indication and uh, cool. Thanks for following along. So a quick rundown of some tools we're gonna use for this. We're gonna use a cordless drill, metric drill bits, Skidoo Canadian metric. We're going to use a center punch, knife to cut open our templates, just to kind of cut around the holes nice and smooth. We're going to use an aluminum carbide burr bit. Um, use a nice, good, medium one. Um, take some material out nice, just take your time. Safety glasses, no one likes aluminum in the eyes. And some hearing protection. Um, that's pretty much all you're going to need. Um, some basic hand tools, some sockets, some wrenches, just for the mechanical side. And then uh, we're all set. So now we have our chassis tipped up and we're working from the inside. We're going to do the PTO side um, template now and all the work's going to be done from the inside of the frame here. So Mike's did a great job and he labeled all the rivet holes so the template can sit flat. So you cut out those nice little holes Mike has labeled there. Template sits flat in the frame. We cut open the stock hole right here. And on the template it did indicate where our third new hole is going to be. We're not too worried about this one uh, cutting it out on there because we're gonna use these two reference holes here, and then when we're all put back together, we'll label the third hole to be cut. So we always cut open the stock hole to ensure that we're indicated correctly in the chassis. The original stock mounting holes for the bearing retainer plate. So it'd be this guy right here. So we've got everything labeled right here, and you can see the inside of the template just touches where the old hole used to be. Um, so we're gonna cut out this white portion right here. So it's gonna be our new bearing plate. We'll be using this hole, this hole, and then we're gonna install our new support plate. 
And then we're going to drill for a third hole right there. And everything's going to be nice and aligned with the other side. And uh, we'll cut it out and we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, so you can see that we had the hole opened up here. Um, so we did our two uh, locating holes for our bearing plate right here and here. Uh, open up for the template, nice and smooth here. So we're ready to put on our plate, our fixture plate. So this puppy right here, uh, it's all stainless goes on this way right here so you can see that i opened up these two holes right here i like leaving the factory rivets uh in the chassis and i just like drilling two new holes here and here and that's going to be uh, where we use our stainless bolts to mount this back on so to reference this all i do i take our bearing plate put it in a chassis like that so that's where i figured out how to drill two of these right here these are gonna be our two uh, plate mounting hold downs. And then we're gonna drill two more here and here. Um, they're gonna be quarter inch. That way I just, it's just pref personal preference. Um, you leave the rivet still in there and uh, everything's all cool. So yeah, that's how you do this side. And then I'll show you the other side, how we build it back up for where our third stud's gonna mount and how we get it back flush. So here we are, we'll check back in a second. So now that we got the PTO plate put in, we're gonna work on the mag side plate. We're gonna do the same as we did on the other side. Um, we open up these holes again right here. We're gonna leave the factory rivets in there. Again, this is only personal preference. I'm gonna drill two new holes again on this side to install the bolts. So I just align this up here with our hole that we've already cut. So we ensure that it's in place just by making sure that it's smooth on the inside right here and everything's aligned up. We're going to go ahead and drill our two quarter holes right here on this side. That's going to index our template here. And then we're going to go ahead and drill two more on this side. Um, so then the plate's fully clamped down with our four stainless steel uh, bolts on the stainless steel plate. So that'll clue up um, this side. And we have both chassis plates then put on the inside. We're back working on the PTO side right here. We're at the last step of the install. Um, we already have our plates fastened in the frame from the inside out. Um, we got the nuts on this side nice and flush on the back. So right here in the frame, we already have drilled our bottom and our side um, bolts for our bearing retainer plate for the drive shaft bearing. So all we're gonna do now in this step right here, we're gonna build up this small section right here using the JB Weld steel stick. You just need this putty up right here and then we'll conform it to our hole right here and then what we'll do after it's dried tomorrow we'll draw our last retaining hole through here so that way when we put the nut on everything on this side is fully flush right here um so when we got that done we'll be pretty much ready to put the shafts back in uh, put our chain case in and then uh work on just getting everything back aligned okay thanks for following Okay, so we let the JB Weld set overnight. So after it's set, all, did, all we did was grind it back down flush. We drilled our last hole right here. So we put our bearing retainer plate. As you can see, it fits like factory. The hole size is original. Um, there's no additional gap here. So this side's all clued up here. Um, the chain case on this side, you're gonna have to cut the bolt here just to slide in. It's a very snug fit. Cut the inside of the bolt, spend some time uh, hand filing the weld so it will fit on here. Um, it's going to be tight. Just keep working at it and it'll fit in there nice and smooth and just check it this side This is the chain case installed. Uh, everything's finished here um, What we can do now is start working on our shafts um, for racing. We're going to blueprint the chassis So basically we're going to start aligning all of our shafts and then we're going to snug everything up when we get a drive shaft in and a jack shaft in So basically we're going to make it as roll as easy as possible um, for the drag racing side so we're going to tighten everything up when we finally get it set in place. Um, so thanks for following. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do want to see more videos of how to install some products that we sell um, or we make, just let us know in the, in the comments. Give us some feedback. Um, and again, this is a Mike Zerkowski uh, drop and roll kit, and we sell it at Pelican Racing Parts on our website. You can reach out with any time with messages through the page. You can text us. You can email us. Um, so thank you very much for watching.